Okay, so welcome to another episode of the Destination Podcast, where we travel around the cricketing world to bring you a little bit about what happens in different cricketing nations. So today on the show, we're pleased to have Matt Featherstone, who's the president of Cricket Brazil. So Matt, thank you very much for coming on the show. Many thanks for having us. It's a real privilege to be to be part of this podcast. Oh, absolute pleasure. Um, so before we jump into some of the current day stuff, which which is happening in Brazilian cricket, could you tell us a little bit about the the history of of where Brazil cricket's come from? Sure, uh, cricket's actually been around in Brazil for for a long time. Uh, we've uh, have records of cricket being played back in 1872 in Sao Paulo and in various states of Brazil, but uh, cricket's only really been formed as an association and now a confederation uh, over the last 19 years. So, as I say, we've, we've been fortunate to have cricket here for, for many years, but it's now becoming uh, more Brazilian and less expat every year. Yeah, that's brilliant. Um, so, kind of speaking on cricket becoming more Brazilian, what are some of the development or community programs that you run to, to kind of see that come to fruition? Well, really, the, we made a decision as an association that if we were going to make cricket stick in cricket, uh, make cricket stick in Brazil, uh, we had to have Brazilians playing the game. Uh, and to get Brazilians playing the game, we then had to get it out there into schools and communities and local governments. Uh, and that was really the, the key to our success. Um, taking it away a little bit from uh, the overseas players and giving it and maybe possibly giving the opportunity to more people uh, was what made the difference. So there was no reason why Brazilians wouldn't play cricket and why Brazilians wouldn't love cricket. We all love it, so why wouldn't Brazilians? It was just giving them the opportunity, going into community programs, putting bats and balls in these people's hands uh, and seeing them love the game that we've always loved. Yeah, excellent. So kind of d development is one side of, of cricket and a structure of a national governing body. Um, but from there, so you, you get some, some kids playing, some teenagers playing. Um, what's kind of the domestic structure of your leagues and things like that where, where there's opportunities for people to take their cricket into a more formal atmosphere? Exactly that. We started off at, at schools uh, and in community projects, giving people just the chance to, to hit a bat and ball and, and start playing the softball game. Uh, we then realised that we needed to start building a pathway for these people that were going to start to play uh, cricket like cricket and, and want to take it on to the next step. So the next step was exactly how we put domestic cricket structures in place. Uh, we started off with two teams in local towns. Uh, and then uh, as that grew and as the demand grew, we then grew in some cities and towns. We have eight to 10 teams, uh, depending on which state. And so that, that pathway was really one of the, the ways that we, we developed cricket. The one, that, the one major thing that I probably left out with the community programs was the, also the big difference for us with Cricket Brazil was having Brazilians teach other Brazilians how to play cricket. Uh, the effect of that was, was bigger than I ever imagined. Having expats, which is great, uh, and having people bringing the game that they love and showing other people uh, how to play it was, was great. But having a Brazilian who you have taught or they've gone through a university program with Cricket Brazil of how to teach and play cricket, having them stand in front of other Brazilians and say what a great game it is, the difference was massive. Um, and, and really, we're now in a situation where Cricket Brazil is keeping the numbers down because we can't provide a pathway at the moment for all the people that want to play. So it's a lovely position to be in. Uh, cricket's growing fantastically, but we're now in a position of saying uh, we can't have 20, 30,000 people coming at once to play cricket because we haven't got a pathway and ground and structure in place for them to, to, to fall in love with the game and take it to the top level. So. Uh, that was, that was one of the main things of, of how the domestic structure really started to grow uh, through the Brazilians teaching. Now, as I say, we have competitive cricket uh, being played in five different states in Brazil. Um, and it's a real mixture of expats and Brazilians playing in this domestic structure. 
Um, what what better to to have really than lots of people from all over the world showing their love for cricket and uh, and falling into cricket Brazil because as we know it, it's it's a global sport and, and more people playing the better it will be. Yeah, absolutely. It's very interesting. I think it's a, it, like you said, it's a great problem to have that you have to kind of almost restrict your numbers to to make sure the ones that are playing kind of have that proper opportunity to kind of develop through the pathway. Um, and I guess from my end, that's that's something that I hope will continue to grow, that you keep getting more opportunities to to build new grounds and new facilities where, where you can keep growing that at the level that obviously the people are are taking it up um but kind of to touch on pathways could you maybe um explain a bit about the national teams that you have um and also the the historic um decision that cricket brazil made last year to award women's contracts um to to a squad of players absolutely i mean Pathways really have, have been put in place since 2006 when we became an, uh, then an affiliate member of the ICC, now an, an associate member. Um, so pathways are really put in place there that every person that started to play cricket, uh, whether it be in the park, whether it be in a community project, could go right the way from representing his local school, his local state, uh, to, to the national team. So mm. that pathway was important for us. We were very fortunate. And it's one thing that I think Cricket Brazil has been very fortunate with is that we didn't have uh, any protocols of what cricket looked like and who cricket was played by. So when we started this project, we went in with a completely blank piece of paper and sport then, but cricket then became a sport for all. It wasn't seen as a male sport, a female sport, uh, and I think that was a real advantage for us because we made cricket what we wanted it to be. So we now have as many female players uh, as male players playing cricket in the country, um, which I think is is unusual. I think obviously from from my coming from a cricketing country before, you would see that eighty to ninety percent of of cricket players would be male. So therefore, during these years of, of development and, and going through our pathways. Uh, and to our national teams. We have a national men's, women's, under-19s, under-17s and under-13s team in place. Uh, and without a doubt, our best performance team on the field and off were our women's team. So when it came to decide as a board in 2000, the end of 2019, uh, how are Cricket Club Brazil going to make their name um, globally, putting their best team forward? And it was an easy decision to make that our women's team would be the ones that would take that forward. Uh, we, feel we got 15 Brazilians. Um, we have about two and a half thousand women playing cricket each week. We chose the best 15. Uh, and it's been amazing this, the, the difference in the, the setup of having a professional team in your association uh, has really made a, a, a massive difference, not just for the 15 at the top, but also for everyone else now that's coming through the pathway that can now see a chance that cricket can become a lifestyle, could become a future for various people um, to be a professional cricket player. And that was something that was, was a dream probably three or four years ago and is now a reality. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely outstanding. And that's, that's amazing to, to hear that the numbers are, it's not really a gender-based sport at all in Brazil. So I think that's, that's kind of something that, you know, at PCA, we're, we're very passionate about including women's players and we've seen some good growth there, but it's really good to see. And I think they're the kind of stories that, you know, the world should promote and, and we're really pleased to, to be able to, to share that story uh, on, our, on our channel with some of our viewers. Um, I'd, I'd encourage anybody that's uh, watching or listening to, to jump onto all of um, Cricket Brazil's kind of socials onto their website follow their stuff because it, it's it's the kind of thing that that'll really help develop the game um and also put brazil on the map so one kind of more question about kind of the national teams what what kind of tournaments does brazil usually enter and what are some of the the goals and things you'd like to achieve through through upcoming tournaments 
we've we've been very fortunate in the last few years to qualify for uh, various ICC tournaments, uh, but also right the way back from from when we started, we have a South American tournament. So the South American Championships was our main uh, tournament uh, that included Argentina, Peru, Chile. Uh, now Colombia have come on board and ourselves. Uh, so that was the, the big tournament of the year to play the South American Championships here. That was our goal. As things have moved on, as Brazil is, is, is qualifying for more ICC tournaments, we've now been invited back to play in the World Cup qualifiers, which uh, hopefully will be sometime this year still, but uh, who's to know? Uh, and therefore, these goals have, have changed completely. We were playing uh, very much isolated down here in South America. Uh, now we've been given the chance to, to step up and, uh, and show our performance on the, on the global stage. We are now hoping that that's going to happen with the under-19s as well. We're working hard with our under-19 side that hopefully they will get a spot in the ICC events. Uh, and I think it's a, just a case of showcasing uh, how much quality cricket is outside of, uh, of what people think of as the cricketing nations. I think many people forget that the ICC is made up of 104 members uh, and most people think it's made up of 10 to 12. Uh, and it's great now that uh, the associate world is having a chance to take part in these World Cup qualifiers and succeed. I think a, a real goal for everyone, not just Cricket Brazil, is, is Thailand cricket. Thailand cricket was in the Women's World Cup. Now, who would have imagined that five, ten years ago? It is just uh, a real inspiration for everyone that the first countries being there like Thailand, it's opened, it's opened the door for everyone. And it's a real refreshing breath of air, sort of breath of fresh air that is a possibility. Uh, and now with our, especially with our female national team training between five to six hours a day, uh, we are really trying to make that possibility a probability. Yeah, no, that's that's fantastic. Um, kind of to move on a little bit, uh, could you maybe explain? Kind of, we've we've kind of wrapped from from the bottom end to the to the top end of of Brazilian cricket. What are some of the positive social impacts that you've seen as a board um, with cricket in the Brazilian community? To be honest, Evan, I think that's probably the biggest uh, factor of why we have cricket in Brazil. Uh, when we started cricket in Brazil for Brazilians, uh, we were here to use cricket, which is a sport we love, uh, to go into communities and try and make a difference. Uh, and that's been the thing that really has had more people come on and buy into cricket Brazil than the actual game of cricket. Uh, we've seen that when you take cricket into local communities, um, sometimes uh, the poorer parts of town even. Uh, but I think as a general, having cricket in communities uh, where we, we know that respect, teamwork, uh, working with others uh, is all part of the day-to-day -day game of cricket, not just the game, has is, is, is been fantastic. And I say, why has Cricket Brazil grown so much? I think it's because of the community links and the difference in communities it's had. Uh, the buy-in from local government has definitely not been a buy-in for cricket. Uh, to come and say that cricket to Brazilians is the best game in the world uh, is, is a difficult sell. Uh, might not be difficult if you're selling football, but if you're selling cricket, it's a little bit different. But going in and saying cricket is making a difference in communities, mm. communities buy into that and local governments, our support now from local government, is exactly on the part that cricket is making a difference in a community. It's giving people uh, a, a different game to do it and also teaching people different values. Uh, and that's where the buying and that's where the sponsorship from local government is really coming in and helping them. As I say, we have a team of 16 now with Cricket Brazil. Uh, 14 or 13 of those have come on board because of the community aspect of the game. Yeah, that's that's really pleasing to to hear, and long may it continue. So, we're in kind of challenging times at the moment. There's a lot of uncertainty in the world. Um, but what are some of the kind of goals from a cricket Brazil standpoint um, as as we look forward? What are some of the things that you want to achieve? 
Firstly, I mean, we'd love cricket to be for all Brazilians. We're, we're, in, we're in a few cities and a few pockets. As you know, uh, Brazil is a fairly large country with over 200 million people. The aim for us one day is to make Cricket Brazil a completely national sport, um, offering cricket to every Brazilian uh, in any school, in any state. That's, that's a goal for us, a long-term goal, but it's definitely a goal for us. Short-term goal is, is making sure that we structure ourselves well enough uh, to cope for the demand. As I said earlier, it's no good having 5,000 people on one cricket ground to play on. Um, you're going to struggle to please those 5,000 and keep them. So we're, infrastructure is a, is a big part of our uh, scheme with the, with the management and the board that we're going to improve the amount of grounds uh, and the amount of training, training facilities that we have. And luckily, every year that is growing. Uh, it really is, and I say that goes back to the community-based parts, that local governments are helping with grounds, with facilities, because they're seeing the buy-in from the community. Mm. What we want as, as national teams and uh, the top end of the period is to be competitive. We want really Brazil to go out there and be competitive uh, with Brazil and show that it's not just the traditional cricketing countries that will play cricket. Uh, cricket will be a sport played for all. Uh, and definitely, I think it won't be long before we will start seeing Brazilians playing in English county cricket, uh, playing in the women's league, playing in maybe a big bashes. I don't think that is a, is a long way away. Uh, and once we, again, crack the ice with that, with that change, I think it will open up all sorts of new avenues and goals for, for Cricket Brazil. We'd love to be, men's wise, we'd love to be cracking into the top 40. Women's, we'd definitely like to be in the top 20 in the world in the next 24 months, COVID depending. Uh, and and I say we 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 want to be uh, a competitive country in the cricketing world. Yeah, very good. Um, so kind of with with all that said, um, we'll we'll put links below um in the description um to to all your socials to to everything that's going on with that. Um, how can people get involved though with um? Cricket Brazil, and can you tell me a little bit about the campaign fund that you've got running at the moment? Obviously, we, we have social media links. We're, we're just building our new website that should be finished, uh, and we've just finished our new strategy for Cricket Brazil uh, with the ICC. So there are ways of, of linking into Cricket Brazil, following Cricket Brazil, uh, and seeing uh, the changes and differences it's making over here. We've started a a crowdfunding page as well, which I'm sure uh, you'll provide the link for. This is to hopefully build a new indoor cricket school. Our aim is that we, with the, with the Go Get Funding, the crowdfunding page, uh, we will uh, generate some income to build a new indoor cricket school for the, for the community. Uh, and as I say, it's, it's been a difficult 18 months. COVID has affected everyone uh, and definitely financially uh, it, it's been a struggle, but uh, with, with, the, with this Go, Go Get funding page and uh, various other initiatives we're starting, we're hoping to keep the ball rolling until we pass this, this, this complicated phase in, in not just cricket Brazil, in, in, in world cricket, in, in life in general. Mm. But I, I really would invite people to log on to the Facebook, log on to the Instagram, have a look at the, at the, at the website to because it, it just shows, as you know, in the Philippines, cricket is a global game. Uh, there are people playing and loving this game in lots more countries than people would ever imagine. Uh, and I think giving them a profile and having a look now and again on, on websites uh, will help grow this. And, and podcasts like you're doing, uh, this is a perfect opportunity for, for people to hear what's happening in Brazil uh, and also for Brazilians to find out what's happening in the Philippines, that cricket in the Philippines exists and is healthy. Yeah, definitely. Um, so kind of one last question before we wrap this up. Could you explain a little bit to the people, like you have a role with the ICC, so what, what is the role you hold? And then could you maybe share a message of, of what you'd like to see from a, a ICC role that you hold for, for global cricket? Yeah, I... 
just I'm at the moment I'm the the globe the ICT global representative for the associates. Um, really, what I'd like to see, uh, as we've spoke about before, cricket becoming a global game, uh, and I would love uh, to think that in 2028 we will be seeing uh, cricket become an Olympic sport once again. Uh, the Olympics for the associate world uh, is massive. It, it is a real uh, opener to not only more, more views, uh, more funding, more government recognition. Uh, I realise uh, we're still looking at what type of format could be played. Uh, I think, to be honest, in the associate world, we'd be happy for any format if it became an Olympic sport. Um, I think that's a key for for growing the game globally, especially here, bringing that to Brazil. Brazilians love the Olympics. It, it's the first question I get asked in any interview or any presentation that I do is, why is cricket so large around the world? Why is it such a large global game, but it's not an Olympic sport? Uh, it's a very difficult question to answer. Uh, and I think if we can now answer that, that in 2028, we will now be back as an Olympic sport, that will make a difference to the Philippines, to Brazil, and the other 90 associate members around the world, more than people could ever imagine. So as my, as my role as, as, the, as a global representative, I'd love to push that. We are pushing that. Uh, and I really hope that the ICC can, can do their best to, to make that happen. Yeah, excellent. So on behalf of myself uh, and the Philippine Cricket Association, I'd really like to thank you for for spending some time with us um uh we we hope that you know moving forward as things kind of start to go back to normal that you know it'll be a great time of growth for cricket in brazil um uh, that hopefully things like this will, will get a few more people on board to to see some of the great work you're doing maybe if they can partner with you if they um if they're moving to brazil or they live there or whatever it is to, to get in touch with them and yeah, we hope to see it continue to grow and yeah, really appreciate your time today. Thanks so much, Matt, for coming on. No, many thanks. And okay, we really appreciate your time to help us uh, just tell a little bit about uh, cricket in a, in a non-traditional cricketing country like Brazil. Uh, and as you say, uh, if we can help spread the word that the cricket's alive and well in, in many countries around the world, uh, it's people like yourself and your podcast that they help do this. So many thanks. Yeah, no problem at all. So until next time, um, thank, you, thank you to everyone for listening. Um, we'll see you again soon with another episode and take care.